I think one of the biggest challenges we face today as parents is the role of social media in our kids' lives. You know, whether to allow it, when to allow it, how much, how much to restrict, how much not to restrict. I think there's like a thousand ways to do social media as a parent, and I'm not sure any of us are getting it quite right. My kids are like literally human guinea pigs, right? Because they're sort of the first generation to have this technology, like basically from the beginning. Between COVID and the existence of social media, it's like, you know, I see kids... You know, my my high school daughter literally is like on Snapchat 24 hours a day and that's how they interact and that's how they make plans. And so it's this real conundrum as a parent, right? Like I was literally the last person to allow my kid to get on Snapchat. I actually made her, required her to make me a PowerPoint presentation about why Snapchat sucks. Um, and, <laughs> and it had to be at least 15 slides and she had to do research and I was like, once you know why I hate Snapchat and why I think it sucks, then at least you can go into it like eyes open. But, you know, part of the reason I was so focused on her um, learning about Snapchat is that kids will tell you like, I know there's a record of this. I know there is like, it doesn't matter that it disappears right away, but they don't really know or they don't get it maybe because they're kids and that's how their brains work until like there's some consequence around it or you know they take a photo of their boobs and then it gets shared around everywhere and then kids get expelled from school I mean like these kinds of things like happen on the regular and so I think it's really hard to teach a kid in a really meaningful way what like their digital footprint is and what that means even if you follow your own kid on social media chances are they are on Instagram for example chances are they have like three other Instagram accounts that you have no idea (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm. who knows what they're doing in there and who's who knows who they're including and excluding man forget about all the other things that are going on on social media i think perhaps the biggest problem is and this is kids and adults alike is you know the loss of sleep from continuous phone and technology use i mean kids cannot self-regulate it is like heroin so you can't tell your kid like leave your phone in the kitchen and then go to bed because no. it, you you don't tell the heroin addict who's in rehab, like, you just need to wait in your room and we'll just leave the heroin in the kitchen. Like, absolutely not. I mean, adults can't even do that. So we actually take our kids' phones from them um, at different times, depending on their age at night. Um, and they don't get them back again until the morning. And because, I mean, seriously, like, Andy, if some girl was sending you, like, sexy texts when you were in high school, at like 11.30 p.m., would you have been like, no, I'm not going to look at my phone. I'm going to leave it at the kitchen. Um, You would have been, right? Like, it doesn't matter who you are. Like, we all would have done that. And forget about all the so-called ill, you know, ill, terrible things that are happening because of social media. And again, maybe they ultimately won't be that terrible. I think just the loss of sleep for kids and adults alike is like perhaps the biggest problem. Um, And I, I just, I just think parents need to keep an eye on that. Thank you.